Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to our new screencast lecture. Today's topic is erosion and deposition. Sounds exciting. Let's get started. Let's move on to erosion. Definition of erosion is the physical removal of rock particles, usually by wind and water. Here you can see the effects of erosion as tree roots are now exposed. At one point, this would have been the ground level. All this area, all this ground, this soil has been taken away. Here's a clip called Landslide Dis Land Slide Destroys Home. This is kind of scary. It started with a trickle of rock and dirt coming down this North Salt Lake hillside. Just minutes later, the top of her tape gave way right before 6.30 this morning. Then a tree fell onto the roof of one of the tennis courts. Moments later, the entire hill started to slide. Morning. Oh man, tough break for that homeowner. Not looking good. There's no way to stop it. Here's a photo showing this person's backyard, which has vanished. I mean, it collapsed. Let's take a, take a look at this clip. It's called Cliff Collapse. A group of hikers in Cornwall got a first-hand look at coastal erosion in its most dramatic form. There it goes. This cliff collapse at Dead Man's Cove is the second to be reported on the same stretch of coast in recent weeks. It's believed climate change is the main cause of this type of erosion as it's causing sea levels to rise. Yeah, you don't want to be anywhere near that when that happens. Flash flooding, you may have heard of flash flooding. Flash flooding is very, very dangerous. Flash flooding can show, uh, cause things like this where you have a dry creek bed and then all of a sudden a very large wall of water could be rushing down through this creek bed. Here's a clip about flash flooding damage newscast. Fast moving floodwaters, leaving a path of destruction in Woodland Park. It's six foot pole right there. Floods wiping out wood and concrete bridges. It's down into Green Mountain Falls. Visitors heard the rushing water as it pooled over their campsites. The water was way up just up here on the bank where, it, where the water should never be was already up to people's ankles. That's why she decided to forego shoes while they moved tents away from the creek as it grew into this. After the raining stopped, all of this was underwater and this is what was left. It went down pretty quickly, but this is what was left whenever I came out of the tent. Now that the water has... Yeah, flash floods are some of the most dangerous and deadliest weather events here in the United States. Watch out. This happened uh, several years ago where there were some Cub Scouts, or Boy Scouts I should say, camping uh, overnight and then a flash flood came through and through where they were camping, where they were sleeping, and unfortunately one of the campers w was killed by the flash flood. Like I said, they could be quite dangerous. Now let's move on to deposition. What is deposition? Well, the definition of deposition is the dropping off of sediments that occurs when agents of erosion can no longer carry its load. So when uh, the wind is blowing and it's carrying away sand, eventually the wind isn't going to stay, stay very strong and it, it may slow down and stop and drop that sand. So deposition is like depositing. It's dropping stuff off. If you've ever made a deposit at the bank, you are leaving money at the bank. Deposition, deposit. One feature that could be caused by deposition is what's called a delta. This is an area at the mouth of a river where a lot of river sediment is dumped. So as the river flows, it's dropping sand and debris and little rocks. Eventually, when that river hits the ocean, it's going to stop the flow of the water and it's going to drop whatever it's carrying and it's going to leave it there at the mouth of the river. That's called a delta. Let's take a look at this clip explaining why do rivers have deltas. 
Where rivers flow into the sea, the land either pokes out or bends inward. Well, coasts are the front lines between two opposing forces, land and water. In order for the ocean to invade the land, sea level either has to come up or the land has to sink down or be eroded away. And in order for the land to advance into the ocean, sea level either has to drop or the land has to build or be lifted up. Obviously, if sea level drops and then rises back again, there's no net gain on either side. But things get more complicated when a river joins the battle. For example, during the last ice age, sea levels fell by over 120 meters, and rivers cut deeper and deeper valleys to reach the falling seas. Then, about 18,000 years ago, warming temperatures began to melt the ice, and the now rising seas flooded river valleys around the world, creating giant estuaries and giving us the innie-riddled coastlines we have today. But when the steady landward march of the seas finally began to slow about 7,000 years ago, the coastlines around the mouths of some rivers began to gain back some ground. The key factor was the sediments that rivers drop as their currents slow at the entrance to the sea. Where the sediment supply was big enough and the ocean was calm enough, the dropped dirt piled up, eventually forming new land that both lengthened the river and divided it in two. Dirt would continue to drop out and build up at the mouths of both channels, splitting the river again and again and again, creating a new lobe of land advancing slowly into the sea. Thus, the world's great Audi river mouths, the fertile deltas like the Nile and the Yangtze that have helped foster human civilization since its birth, all came into being at just about the same time. That was a good job, and you can see that they all those uh, sediments depositing in the river can really cause a problem as well. So rivers are important for shipping goods. What if too many sediments start filling up the river? What could happen then? Here's a clip showing a coal barge on the Ohio River showing you how important it is to have these waterways clear so boats can get through. All right, that was cool. So you saw that coal being moved down the river. So this coal might have been mined in West Virginia, the Southeast Ohio, and it's being brought down the Ohio River through Cincinnati and then maybe even to the Mississippi River and somewhere else. Here's what people do if there's too much sediments in the river. This is called dredging. This uh, reminds me a lot of a snowblower, if you've ever used a snowblower. But in this case, it's a snowblower, but for mud. <laughs> Yeah, you certainly wouldn't want to be an unsuspecting catfish. You're sitting there at the bottom of the river and you just get launched. Woo! Here you see a diagram of sediments falling to the bottom of the creek. The larger pieces are not going to move nearly as far. The small pieces the rivers can take farther because they're lighter. The larger pieces are going to get dropped first. The smaller pieces are going to drop second. And you, get, you end up with the larger pieces on the bottom and the smaller pieces settling in at, at the top. Here's a clip called the deposition of sediment at the mouth of a small stream. This kind of goes along with the delta. So when you look at the at, at that shape at the bottom, at the mouth, you can get an idea of that uh, delta being formed. All right, this part's important. Here you see a creek, and it's a meandering creek, so you can see the bends in it. And the meandering creek is formed by weathering, erosion, and deposition. Here's a clip called Erosion and Deposition. Here you can see that meandering creek, the water's flowing down this way. And you can see part of the side here being eroded, and you can see deposition being formed here. So it cur curves back and forth. Erosion on this side, deposition on this side. Ooh. 
In your notes, go ahead and make this sketch. It does not have to be fancy and detailed. I would just draw a line like this, and then another line like this. So it's both sides of the creek. This side of the creek here, this is going to be erosion. The water smashes into the side of the creek here and breaks apart the soil, breaks apart rocks. That is the erosion side. It's being hit right here. It's smacking into that side. This side is deposition, so as the water is rushing here, smashing into this side, it is dropping off sediments and deposits here. So this side of the river is being broken down and pushed over. Here are some characteristics of this bank. Don't need to write this down, you can, but these are things you should know. So on this side, the deposition side, this is the deposition side, you're gonna have slower moving water. This is the water's moving slower than over here. The water over here is gonna be more shallow. There's sediments being deposited here and the water will get more and more shallow. This side is more deep and it's going to be a gentle slope. It's not gonna be very steep over on this side. That's deposition side. Here's a cross section. This is the outer bend. This is where the water is smashing into the side. On this side, the water is moving the fastest. The water is the deepest. On this side, the deposition side, sediments being deposited here. This is going to become more and more shallow with time. Now on the erosion side, the characteristic on the erosion side is the water is going to be moving faster on this side than it is over here. The water over here will be deeper in depth than over here. And the slope is going to be much more steep. So if you're walking, it goes straight down. It's a steep slope. Take a look at this cross section. See if you can identify this as either the erosion side or the deposition side. So is A, is this the erosion side or is this the deposition side? I'll give you a second. This is the deposition side. This is the inside of the riverbed. It's a slow moving water. It's the deposition of material here. And it's a gentle slope away from the beach. So this side is going to be the erosion side. And characteristics of that is the outside of the riverbed. It is the fastest flowing water. Erosions are going to create the this steep cliff, this steep bank over on this side. Take a look at this diagram. See if you can identify it, letter A as either erosion or deposition. Go ahead and write it in your notes what you think. This is the deposition side. The water is going to smash into this side and erode it away. So this is, you want to think about where the water is going to be smashing into. The, that's going to be the erosion side. The opposite side is going to be deposition. So letter B, letter B, the water is going to smash into the side here. So that is going to be erosion. And then the water is going to come this direction and then smash into this side here. So letter C is going to be erosion also. And then as it flows out here, the water is going to hit the lake in this case and is going to slow down abruptly and dump its sediments and that is going to be a deposition port point and there that's where you might form that delta so the delta may form here here's a picture of a delta i think that looks really neat it's that fan like shape is what you're going to be looking for this is called a delta what about the speed of the flowing water so let's take a look at a as compared to b a is going to be slower, B is going to be faster. The water is going to come in fast and smash into this side. The water here is going to be slower, and this side is going to get smashed. It's going to be dug deeper, and this side, the sediment, and this side, the sediment, it's going to be dropped here, and it's going to become more shallow. This side is going to be faster. The reason why it's faster, the deeper water is going to move faster because there's less friction. So as water rubs against the, the, the side and it rubs against the bottom of the creek, that's going to slow down the, the water. Since this water is much more deep, it doesn't hit the bottom of the creek very much or many places, so it's going to move faster. Here's a clip. This is called Stream Table Time Lapse, showing all these things in action. So watch for deposition, look for erosion, maybe even look for deltas forming.
right, well, let's take a look back and review all that we've learned. A good way to picture this process is to do something like this. Think about this, like a rock being hit with a hammer. The rock being hit with a hammer, the rock's going to break, and that's weathering. So that breaking up of a rock is weathering, breaking rocks into smaller pieces. Next thing you think about is maybe this dump truck. The dump truck picks up the broken rocks and carries it away. That's erosion, moving the pieces of rock. And finally, deposition. You see the dump truck dumping off the pieces of rock. Well, dump the pieces at a new place. That's called deposition. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Hopefully you learned something. We'll catch you next time. If you like this, be sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Of course, always smash that subscription button, and we'll catch you next time. See ya!